directed graphs. Now, what is a directed graph? Well, when we place an arrow, so a direction on every edge, we have a directed graph. The abbreviated form is diagraph. Now, remember, network is a connected, directed graph with no loops. Doesn't have to be directed, but now we're talking about directed graphs, so be aware of well, that. A lot of textbooks also, Mr. Denatale, refer to it as a digraph as well. Yep, that's true. We can represent networks using adjacency matrix. We've gone through the adjacency matrices before. Now, just to quickly do it, A to A, there is no connection between A and A. There is one connection between A and B along there, no connection between A and C and one connection between A and D, and so on. We won't go through all of them. Remember, this is directed, so it doesn't go the other way as well. Reachability. If we have a path that exists between two points in a network, then one point is said to be reachable from the other, which means we can get to it. Here, each edge and vertex can only be traversed once, so be careful of this. We can't just keep going around and around to get to another point. Here's a few things. B is reachable from A in one step. Okay, so if we start at A, we can get to B in just one step, one edge. C is reachable from A in one and two steps. So we can get to C by going from A to B and then B to C, or we can get to C by going directly from A to C. That's the one step, while well, before it was two steps. And D is not reachable from A at all because there's nothing that comes into D, it just leads out from D. A reachability matrix can be constructed for the above network. We can do one step and two steps and so on. R1, R to the power of one, is the number of one step paths. R2, that's the number of two step paths. R3 is the number of three step paths. And we can do R4, R5, etc. if we require it. We don't have to do it if we don't. Now for this example, we can just get the R1, the one step, the two step, the three steps, and add them all up. So we're adding each cell for each uh, of the reachability graphs, and we come up with right. something like this. All right, and we get a total reachability table. Now we haven't done the one step separately, the two step separately, and the three step separately. We've just done them all as one here. So what I'm just doing is that we add up the columns. Adding up your columns, you get one for the A, and you get one plus one is two for your B, two, one, and three gives you six for your C, and D, there is zero, okay? Now we'll do one here. The graph represents a one-way road system. I think I like to explain this as a road system of Sydney. Sydney has a lot of one-way streets in the city, isn't that right, That's Mr. right, Eddie? that's okay. right. All right, so here we go. A, B, C, D, we won't read them all. It says, which locations in the system are reachable from A? Which locations in the system are reachable from A? So if we look at A, we can get to B along this path over here, straight, directly. So B is one of them. We can get to C. We can get to D. We won't mark them all in. I'm sure we can go from there. We can get to E. We can get to F. We can get to G. There's no way that we can get to H because H has only got a road coming out, so we can't get to H. We can get, can't get to I because there's uh, no road going into That's I, right, but right. we can get to J, K, and L. So there's all the places that we can get to from A. Part B says which locations in the system are not reachable from C. Not reachable from C. So if we're starting at C, we can't get to A at all. We can go down to G, across to F, but we can't get to B. So A's out, B's out. We can't get to H and we can't get to I because nothing goes into those two. Then starting at G, this is part C, how many ways can you get from G to K? Identify these paths. Okay, there's two ways that we can get to G, uh, from G to K. We can go from G to K directly. Okay, there's an arrow that goes straight along there. Or we can start at G, we can go to F, from F we can go to J, from J we can go to K. Okay, so those are the two ways.
Example two says the graph represents a one-way road system again. It says construct a reachability matrix R1 showing all one-step paths. Okay, so this is uh, quite a big because we have A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So we need to make sure that we look at each one of those across each way. E, F, and G. And we're going to do the same for the top, of course. Don't mind my writing here, Mr. Bento. It's quite hard to do it on this. Uh... All right. Remember, we're using a tablet here to write, so it's a little bit difficult. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Okay, so if we look, there's no way we can get to A. A does not connect to A, so we've got a zero. A connects to B in one way. There we are, so we put a one. A doesn't connect to C, doesn't connect to D, doesn't connect to E, F, but it does connect to G straight away. Remember, this is one step, so it has to go directly to them. B, we've got a zero and zero. B connects to C only, so we've got a one there and all the rest are zeros. C does not connect to A, B or C. Connects to D once. Doesn't connect to E and F, but it does connect to G. All right, Ds. All zeros except to E. The E's all zero except to F. So F connects. Yeah, zero there and zero. Zero, zero. Yep. Now E, e. zero, 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 one and zero. Yep. F, zero, zero, one. That's connect to C. Zero, 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 zero. And G doesn't connect to anything at all. So, so that's, that's one step only. So that'll be R, one. one. Normally we write it up the or, top. Or at the top or at the yeah. bottom, doesn't matter. All right. Then it says, part B, construct a reachability matrix showing all possible paths. <laughs> okay, let's do that one. All right, so we'll do that one. All right. Uh, where would I do it? I'm not quite sure where we're going to do it. <laughs> All right, I'll do it up here. All right, let's do it up the top. It doesn't matter. So we've got A, A B, C, a, D, e, B, e, F, G C, again. D, E, F, and G. And... A, B, C, D, E, F, and G again. And then just give it a bit of space. Now this is all possible paths. Okay. So it's one, two. Okay. All right, so, and I'm just going to read them out. A does not connect to A, so it's a zero. A connects to B once, A connects to C once, to D once, to E once, to F once, to G twice. Because we can go A to G directly, or we can go from A to B, to C, to G. Right, B, zero, zero, then one, 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 one. C, zero, 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 and then one, 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 one. D, zero, zero, then one, zero, one, one, one. E, zero, zero, one, one, zero one one f zero zero one 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 zero one and g doesn't connect to anything again so that's reachability dominance is the next part that we're looking at dominance it's similar to reachability but we know the graph is known as a dominance graph Okay, D1 is one dominates another, D2 is one dominates another, who dominates another one. So the total dominance matrix is D1 plus D2, and we use this to calculate a new set of dominance. Big D. All right, so let's go through one so we know what we're talking about. It says four people, A, B, C and D, have been asked to form a committee to decide on the location of a new toxic waste dump. From previous experience, it is known that all right, it is known that A influences the decision of B and D. Yep. B influences the decision of C. C influences the decision of no one, and D influences the decision of C and D. So Construct a graph to represent this situation. So let's do the graph up the top here. So A has influence on B and D. So we have put an arrow like this to B and also to D. And I can have C over here as well. 
So right. that's D and that and one's coming down. No, well, A, A to D, sir. A to D. We haven't done that. A, oh, A to D, A yep. To D. That's yep. correct. Yep. That go. one's wrong, that arrow. Then we have B goes to C. So B has the dominance on C. B goes to C. C doesn't go to anyone. So that stays as it is. And then D goes to C and B. So D goes to C. C. And, and B, so the arrow head should go that, should go that up, way. Up, up so up there's, there's that one there. We've uh, drawn the graph there. Now, part B says use the graph to construct a dominance matrix which takes into account both one step and two step dominances. So we'll draw it up A, B, C, D on both. A doesn't have any dominance over itself, so that's at zero there. A has dominance over B in two ways A to B directly. But then A to D and then D to B. So that's two ways. A has dominance over C in two ways. A to B and then B to C. Or A to D and then D to C. And A has dominance over D one way. Then the B. B has no dominance on A, no dominance on itself. But it has dominance over C in one way and nothing to D. Then C has no dominance at all. So 0, 0, 0. It says it influences no one. D has a 0 to A, 1 to B, 2 to C, because it can go to C directly, or up to B and then across to C, and 0 to itself. So there is the dominance table. Then the next part says, from this matrix, determine the most influential person on the committee. Most influential person on the committee. The way to do that is we add the rows up. So before it was the columns, this time it's the row. So A has 2 plus 2 plus 1, that's 5. B has 1, C has 0, and D has 3. So the highest number wins. A is the most influential person on the committee with a dominance score of 5. Okay. Next example. Example 4 says 5 players. Play each other in a round robin with results below A defeated, C and D, etc. Both B and E have three wins. How can we resolve who is the best player? So it looks like uh, we're going to have to draw a dominance matrix, one step and two step, and then add them up and uh, get the person with the highest score. Yeah, we can do them all together, but it's easier sometimes if we do it as separate. Right, we'll do D1. Yeah, we'll do D1 first, and we're just going to quickly read these out. You can do it as a... Um, do the graph first if you want, and then get it off the graph. We're just sort of going to uh, do it straight away. Okay. All right. A, B, C, D, E. A only dominant defeats C and D, so it's one on the C and D and zero for the others. All right. Yep. B defeats A, C, and E, so it's one for the A, the C, and the E, and zero for the others. C only defeats D, so it only gets a one on the D. And zero for the others. D is defeated by B, so that only gets a one there, and zero for the others. And D is defeated by A, C, and E, so it gets a one there, and zero for the first. Zero. One, zero. One, one, zero. One, one, zero. And we can add these up again. Remember, it's a row, so we've got two, three, one, one, and three. So, so, so far, B and C are equally dominant. We D2. can't uh, can't see because we got three and three for both. So let's do D two. So D two. We won't. It's okay. Yeah, we won't put the letters. It's zero one zero one zero one zero zero two three zero one zero 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 one zero one zero one and zero, one, one, two, zero. So this one is, on the side, we'll write the dominance, two, six, one, three, and four. Okay, so remember we have to have a total dominance, so we have to add these two together. We're just gonna add the numbers on the side, we're not gonna do the whole dominance table. So just adding the numbers on the side, A gets four, because 2 from the first one and 2 from the second one, so that's 4. B has 3 and 6, so that gives us 9. C has 1 and 1, so that gives us 2. E, sorry, D has 1 and 3, so that gives us 4. And E has 3 and 4, so that gives us 7. 
Okay, so if we were to rank these players, B is a top player with a dominance of 9. E is second with a score of 7. A and D are equal, third with a score of 4. And C is the bottom ranked player with a score of 2. So that's easy to see. So I'll just write down here, best, the best player, the best player is B. B. Exercise 24A.